Hello again, friends and compatriots. It's Solid Zaku for part three of the airbrushing tutorial for miniatures. All right. Now, before we begin, and I'll put a number at the bottom to uh, let you skip down to the part of the movie that you want to see, if that's what you're here for. If you're just here to learn how to paint, go straight ahead. I won't blame you. Uh, but first of all, let me make uh, a few recommendations, if you will. Uh, if you remember in my comments on the first video, I said uh, some nasty things about other online painters and how I didn't care about how I was running over their territory or stealing their views or whatever because I thought they were pretentious and, you know, money-grubbing. Well, that's true for most of them, but there are some very special exceptions that I'd be completely remiss and completely wrong in not mentioning. Uh, first of them is uh, AwesomePaintJob.com's Les Bursley. The man is an amazing painter. Just everything he does is solid gold, you know, you wonder if he's a disgruntled heavy metal, you know, member. Um, he makes wonderful things. He's done uh, a, I um, can't remember their name, uh, Crimson Fist Tutorial, Black Templar, Death Guard, The Works. Uh, he's done all kinds of chapters and armies. Uh, wonderful, wonderful tutorials. And the best part about it, he shows them painted from start to finish, all of it for free on his YouTube channel. Uh, visit Awesome Paint Job. They're absolutely great. Uh, another person who I would like to recommend is Girl Painter. She's a uh, German woman with some wonderful tutorials, specifically her take on the salt and hairspray technique. Uh, really fun to watch. Uh, wonderful accent. Just really nice videos. Also, she happens to be a member of the Bolter and Chainsword. So, that's also a plus. Uh, that's always a plus. What am I saying? It's always a plus. Uh, if you're a Space Marine fan, if you've ever been into it, or if you just want to see some wonderful art and uh, art writing, uh, rules making, the works, just visit bolterandchainsword.com. Uh, okay, now enough of the plugging. Let's go for what you are here for. All right. Let's begin painting. Uh... It's a bit amusing because in a prior take of this, I managed to do the entire thing, start to finish, no snags, no hitches, no nothing. But I forgot to turn my microphone on, so absolutely nothing that was said was recorded. Now it's true, you can't see my face, so I could have easily just overdubbed it, but I forgot what I'd said. So we're just going to start again with a new tank. Uh, and I'm going to mention something about that tank that I mentioned in the previous tape that never got recorded. And it is a challenge. Okay, that's impossible to see with this crappy camera. So, I'm going to tell you that the name of this rhino is Zarnag. The other tank was named Zill. If you can, in the comments, tell me what those are references to. I will give you extra cookies if you manage to tell me what they are. Uh, again, that's Zarnag and Zill. Uh, another little plug is this is these chapter symbols are actually raised and are made with Plasticard using my Plasticard tutorial that's also on my channel. So check that out. Okay, painting, painting, painting. Let's get onto it. Um, here is your paint mixing cup. This is your screwdriver, which was one of the unfortunately unmentioned parts of the things you need. Uh, what do you need the screwdriver for? Well, it's to transfer paint from large medium to small medium. And I know small, medium, and large, ha ha ha, but you get what I mean. It's for transferring paint from one thing to another with no spills, no thrills. Yes, if you're doing it right, the painting you're doing is boring. Okay, now first off, take your very good water and add about, I'd uh, say, ooh, a tablespoon or two, maybe a little less, just enough to make sure that your paint isn't directly touching bottom, because it'll stick to the bottom of your cup, and I mean, unless you're using metal, of course, but we're not, because we're cheap. So, just a little extra water. I mean, you're going to need the water anyway to mix it, so no harm, no foul, nothing wrong is done. Now, the thing about paints is you have to understand their pigmentation level. 
that is how much of a color it makes anything else. And uh, in this case, this uh, Master's Touch series, the black is incredibly powerful compared to its white, and the same goes for most of its dark colors. The uh, ultramarine blue. Ha! Huh, ultramarine. Didn't even notice that. Ah, Ghost Murphs. Anyway, and I'm a Raven Guard player, so oh well. Uh, same with any of the dark colors the green, the blue, the uh, brown that I mentioned in a few other videos. Very powerful stuff, so always start with your lighter color and add more to that. Now you're going to, and let me see, I had trouble with this in the first take as well, showing you how much to add. That should be enough. It's about, mm, I'd say, an inch or two of paint worm. Now for the black, we want to add very little. There, that's enough. That's probably too much, actually. I can already see it discoloring the water, and it will probably be too much. Oh, well, yeah, look at that. Just much too black. Much too black. It won't highlight hardly anything at all, and that is certainly not what we want. So, easy fix. Just add some more. Easy fix, easy fix. Uh, now, if you want to talk about painting inspiration, uh, my inspiration has always been the immortal, the inconquerable uh, Bob Ross. Uh, look him up if you don't know who he is. I wouldn't blame you for not knowing him. His tapes are a bit old, and they only show on PBS, a channel most people never even watch, which is a shame, because Bob Ross is absolutely amazing. Uh, he is your master, you just don't seem to realize it quite yet, but you will after you watch his stuff. Ah, see there, that's much better. Paint's lightening up very, very nicely. It's turning into a very nice light gray. Just keep stirring the world out of it. I would call Bob Ross Sir Bob Ross, but Britain wasn't intelligent enough to knight him. Their loss. Okay, now that that's said, a color that I enjoy Let's go with our thinner. And in our case, our thinner is going to be our alcohol. Just take a true little of that. If you notice, I create words very often. And add one, two, three, and you have to eyeball this. At least I have to. I don't, I'm not a chemist, I'm not a painter, I don't know mixes very well. Four. That's all, you do not need much. And that's specific, that's precisely why you need the dropper. Anywho, stir that in a little bit. Now, you may notice some swirling, some generally undesirable effects going on in your paint. That's fine, that's fine. Because as much stirring as you get done in your stirring bowl, you do the finishing stirring within the brush itself. Which is an amazing thing, I think. It's probably because it's metal. You know, frankly, if you're deciding to splurge a little bit, a metal bowl probably would help. So let's add it in. Tap the side of my airbrush with the painty stir stick. Oh, so much for clean. And let's just stir that in a little more. And when you're doing this, be extra careful not to touch your needle. Just basically keep it at the top of the thing and just stir it in. Don't touch your needle. Needle wants to be left alone. Just wants to be left alone, so leave it alone. Okay, now let's move that off to the side so you guys can see stuff. Normally when I'm painting, I just leave it there because I don't honestly need anything else there. Now, let me just make sure that the consistency is good. It is. Okay. Now, this was the color in the earlier video, but when I did it, I noticed that was a little too dark. I had to apply too much paint in order to get it to do what I wanted, so... Much better, I think. I'll have to look at that on the videotape and see how... Videotape. <laughs> Who uses tape anymore? Not I. So, let's get started. Okay, 
Now, when you're airbrushing, the rule is move the model, not the brush. And that holds mostly true. You want to move the model as much as possible. Uh, well, okay, actually, it's kind of a, a kind of a hidden rule because it says move the model, but that just means move the model around as if it was, you know, pivoting and whatnot. For the actual left and right and up and down, that's perfectly fine with your airbrush. It's not going to affect your flow in any way. Just make sure that the brush is always pointing down. I mean, at most, you know, a little under horizontal. Never have it going up or else you're going to have some nasty feeding problems. Um, I haven't had any yet, but that's just because I've been cautious enough not to watch it. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here. Let's just do a quick run around. Is the model beforehand. Very dull, very plain Jane. Only five colors on it. White, black, uh, bleached bone, silver and gold. That was probably six. I'm not a math person. love that chapter banner, but it's going to have to change up a bit. So let's get started. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do one of the intermediate uses for airbrushes. The easiest use is base coating, but what's the point of showing that? Um, just drying off a few bits. I've had this, uh, I had to clean this before the taping because I screwed up on the other video. So let me just, while I'm doing this, let me tell you a few things. Uh, this is going to be an intermediate use for it, because we could have just done base coating, but nothing would have been learned there. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of the black. Now, this doesn't mean just pour black, pour gray over everything. No, you want to get it on the lines. You want to get it where black touches either other colors or open space. And by open space, it means the sharp edges here and you know, around here. You know, if you know what a rhino looks like, you know what I'm talking about. It's these these crevices, these places where black touches red, or these edges where it touches the sky. Just basically things to weather it so that it looks like it's gone through, you know, millennia of warfare and death and destruction and run over people's bodies and just basically been a good little uh, tank shocking machine like any rhino that's dumped out its cargo ought to be. So let's get started. Just when you're highlighting, barely, barely, barely depress the trigger. If your paint mixture is good, that's all you're gonna need. And just make sure to touch those edges feather soft. The number one rule in painting is you can always add more paint. Always. But you can't take paint away. Once it's there, unless you strip it, it's staying there. So just make sure you know what you're doing while you're doing it. I don't really think I can stress that point enough because it is as rudimentary as it is fundamental. Now bear in mind I am filming this during an all-nighter, so not only is my painting not going to be top-notch, neither is my speaking. So bear in mind, I typically pride myself on my good use of the language, but right now not too focused on that. And as you can see, it is looking a bit more beat down, which is exactly what we want. We want our stuff to look decrepit and a little dusty. That's exactly what we want. Alright, let me take care of the Okay, you may see that there. there's some water coming through from when I had to uh, clean it out. That's the problem with these uh, boxy models that aren't open top like orc vehicles. They uh, gather water a little too easily when you're cleaning them.
and then retain it rather magnificently when you're trying to paint them again. Okay, so now these slits here, they're going to have much better highlights than what I have right now. They're just sort of a dwarf bronze, maybe a few bits of gold picking it out. So I'm just going to hold the brush back and just hit them up. Hit the whole thing up, and then I'll come back with a black color. Hit them up with a black color, uh, pop out the golds a little more, and it'll be basically as if I had just done it regularly throughout the whole thing because that is very small and I have very constrained for time. Now, the end product for this is not going to be very pretty, but that is because I have time constraints thanks to YouTube. And it doesn't matter because at home you're going to have as much time as you want. So just remember wherever the black is segueing into something, whether it be another color or the open sky. Just get things to make the edges pop. And just remember, don't betray the law, or else you get ugly little accidents like that. You know, this is actually good because I can make these newbie mistakes and I can just say, hey, it was all part of a tutorial, right? Right. Right. Mm hmm. That's all that was. It's just a tutorial, man. Don't get on my case. Alright, and let's take care of the top. Now, for the top, it's a really wide open. An expanse of black paint. So, what you want to do is first just take care of what you need to take care of, which is, of course, your uh, basic highlights around the cupolas and the top hatches. And just get that there. Okay, yes, you can see it. But see, that just doesn't look quite right. So what you do is hold it about six, seven inches away, and just spray. That lightens up the black color. Just dry up a little, dry it up a little bit. That spreads out that gray color so that even though, yes, it does look very similar to what is shown here, it's not quite the same, because this one has the right to pop, because the things that pop are very small. This, if it all popped, it would look uh, not quite right. And as a matter of fact, uh, that sort of aged look, that aged paint look, is what we're going to want to do to the red parts as well. Or red and gold, as is my case. Uh, because these are shaded, and these are not. Uh, it doesn't quite work right. So... Let's just take care of that. And with airbrushes, what I like to use is just a circular spinning motion because your eye kind of can't tell that you've done that. It just looks as if it's not necessarily radiating agedness, but it does look pleasing to the eye. Just check my flow. Flow is good. Just do that from time to time to make sure you're not having problems with tip drying. That's where the paint will dry on the edge of your uh, needle tip, and that is a no-no. Get that cleaned out as quickly as possible, and just age that red. 
just lighten it up a little bit, make it look like it's been sitting in a hangar for six or seven hundred years. Fade it out. MacArthur said, old soldiers never die, they just fade away. And that's what you want this to do, just fade away. If you know who he is, you can probably hear my me, inner, me channeling my inner Bob Ross. So there it is. Okay. Uh, oh, well, well. There we are. Okay. Let me turn off my compressor. Just holster that for a second. And there you have it. This is Zarnag. Now the aged and weather-beaten champion of a thousand tactical spam rushes. Yes, indeed. Much better, I'd say, from when he started out. But certainly not as good as he could have looked. Because I didn't have much time with him. But you can see the power is yours planeteers so that is just one of the many uses you have with your paintbrush now in video four which may come out a little later than this one did between you know two and three uh three and four may come out a bit later but that's because i'm gonna let you you the youtube viewer choose what it is you'd like to see me do with airbrushing now bear in mind uh Oh, you know what? Strike that. I'm taking the power away from you. That is right. I am invoking martial law. Uh, what I'm going to do in my next video tutorial is I'm going to show you how to use airbrushes to create non-metallic metal uh, looks. Now, non-metallic metal means you create a metallic sheen on something without actually using metallic paints. You just use you know eye trickery and uh, shading to make things look... Uh, as if they were painted using metals, or as if they were metal. Uh, just look up NMM and miniatures in any search engine, you'll see exactly what I mean. And I'm going to show you how to do that with an airbrush. It's going to be amazing, folks. I guarantee it. Uh, now, nor in the last video, I showed you how to clean out your airbrush, but that's very specific to each manufacturer. I'm not going to waste your time with it. And uh, when I did it, it took more than five minutes to do just that and that's rather boring so I'm going to spare you with that and uh, instead I'll just give you the briefest of looks at the earlier version Zill and as you can see he wasn't done up all that well either but that was because I was making a sacrifice for you the YouTube viewer and I can just say hey uh, Long road trip, not many stops for paint, uh, had to have uh, servitor monkeys do it. Uh-huh. And that uh, gray storm bolter, which you may not be able to see properly, is the uh, gray color that was used for this, the uh, darker, not-so-pleasant shade. Uh, now, a question I did get from uh, uh, PM was, Hey, Solid, do you... Um, how ventilated is your room? Uh, you can't see it. It's off camera, and I don't bother. Won't bother you with showing it. But suffice to say, it's very well ventilated. I don't have any problems with fumes or anything like that. I'm very well taken care of. And why don't I use gloves? Which I actually, you know, had a lot of people asking. You know, why do you use gloves in my other videos, uh, which I may have deleted. Anywho. Um, I don't use gloves because I don't have latex allergies. I have a feeling that's why other people in other videos use gloves other than just the cleanliness aspect. I have a feeling they may have a latex allergy, which if you don't know if you have, check with your doctor because doing this, even in a fairly well ventilated room, could lead to, seri could lead to serious respiratory problems. So just make sure that you're okay to do this before you do this. <laughs> okay, I mean, I know something as simple as painting shouldn't require a doctor visit, but you'd much rather be the doctor than the ER. Okay. So, there you have it. That's painting video number three. I will come back with my non-metallic metal tutorial, and I will answer any questions and comments and suggestions that you guys put in this video and any of the others if you have any more questions. Uh, as always, I'm Solid Zaku, and as always, 
out.